what's up everyone? My name's Gary. And today we're exploring Quichel Trail, which is located right near the heart of Alto Pass. Now Alto, as it is known by locals, is an old railroad town that was incorporated in 1882. Before that, it was regarded as Quichel Gap. Now my family has a long history around the Alto area, and even the pump you see in town was donated by my mother from her childhood home, which was only a few miles away from Alto. So this trail is actually an abandoned railway. The original track was laid down in the 1870s and was called the Cairo and St. Louis Narrow Gauge Railroad. In 1981, the last train whistle was sounded from these tracks. And years later, it was transformed into what you see today. So we've got this shell that runs along the side of the railroad track here. And I believe this is called Digonia. <laughs> this is a day of hard words runs along the side it is flaky and fragmented this section here almost looks like it's a wall that's been created like stones stacked up on top of each other so this is going to be our transition here i mean it just kind of slowly goes away and then we're headed to the sandstone over here all right so this is a pretty cool area uh, there's a little passageway in between these rocks and yeah, you get to this sheer wall here. Well, what is really neat is when you turn back around here, you can see that this rock here fits perfectly within this area. So it slid about 12 feet this way. And then you can go around this way also. This, this way is a little bit tighter. Yeah, that's pretty neat. So recently, this has become a very popular climbing spot. And I've actually climbed this section here, and I forget what this route is. These holds, these holds are rough. They are, this is not soft stone at all. That iron oxide is, is pretty gnarly on the hands. And I've stood here and watched people climb. And then a rock down here, right there, is an imprint of bark. We may see more of this down, down the bluff a little bit, so. Yeah, so I'm up on this rock now. Look at here. This is a tree imprint. A really good tree imprint. That is cool. I've been up on this rock filming before, uh, rock climbing, and I pass right by this. So this bluff is about 60 foot tall at its highest point, made of Caseyville sandstone. This is a perfect example of a joint in a rock. Yeah, I probably wouldn't suggest coming back here when it's warmer, because this looks like a good place for snakes. This is a perfect view there, it looks like a bridge that's up across here. And I know you can get up on top of this rock here. We'll go check that out a little bit later. This is somewhat new to the area. So somebody has stacked these rocks here. What I do remember is this section here, but they've created a little pool here for the spring. Now you really can't see it seeping out or anything like that, but Gosh, I almost just fell in. And I found this creepy little doll up here just sitting. <laughs> okay, so made it up here to the top. This rock is really red though. I'm trying to get a good view of this rock overall. Uh, right down here is the spring. Right up there is where we'll be going a little bit later. That is the shelter. And we'll just continue along this train track here. See a lot of cross bedding here. Yep. And it's got a little bit of angle to it. So there's a little crack here. I don't think I can go too far into it. I do need to be careful. Now for creepy crawlies. Oh yeah. So it does go back there a little ways. It is like really damp in here. But yeah, that's neat. Yeah, we're not going to go any further because it looks like it ends up there. 
pretty cool view out there. Yeah, that rock is moist. All right, let's get out of here. Okay, so we've got a little area here. It's not very big. That's kind of neat though, that it goes back in there that far. Oh, look what we got here. Looks like a little tree imprint. Maybe right there too. So here's another crawl space. I don't think I'm gonna go on this one because it is warming up. Uh, but you could crawl through that one. Like I said, if it was colder, I'd probably go in there. But since it is probably around 50 right now, I'm not gonna chance it because I'm, I'm at the edge of it being where uh, snakes should be out. I am pretty sure I am underneath the overlook now. These two sections here, that one there probably being the predominant one. That's just right above this uh, rock pile where that uh, tunnel goes through. So down below this overlook, is another wood imprint here. When you find one wood imprint, it's pretty likely that you're gonna find some more. And that's that's what happened here. I've got one coming out of the rock here. It's got an edge to it there, but that is definitely a wood imprint. And right here is one. Right over here is another one. So we're on the right level to see these things. So I may go back through here. That's getting steep here, so options oh there's one yeah so you may be thinking that you know that i'm seeing things in the rock uh be it these wood imprints it's like oh that doesn't look like a wood imprint maybe you're just seeing just a pattern of how the iron oxide you know dissolved but uh i'm going to show you something that uh pretty much leads me to believe everything i've seen up to this point and it is this here but yeah, that is just beautiful. This imprint here is what led me to check out the rest of this bluff. Because I had been back here before, I'd, I'd previously filmed me just walking here when I first started making videos 10 plus years ago. But I didn't know this stuff was here. So it wasn't until one of my previous videos that I started really looking for this in uh, Southern Illinois. And this is probably one of the better imprints of this particular type of wood that I have seen. Now, I want to show you another area. It's just right above here. And that is definitely a wood imprint. And it's a really good one. It's long too. It goes way back in there. Uh, now, I don't know if the whole section like over here is a wood imprint, but I definitely know that this was the trunk or a branch of a tree. Yeah, just a beautiful area. And it just always reminds me that I need to check out places that I've been before because you'll never know what you find. When I do these long shots by myself, my camera is right up there. And there is no one watching it. So I need to get up there really quick to retrieve it. Located within the joint of this rock is a sandstone staircase that takes you to the top of the bluff. And it's still here. Yay. At the top is Cliff View Park, which includes a native sandstone shelter and most importantly, one of the best scenic viewpoints in Southern Illinois. So what you can see from here is a clear distinction from the foothills of the Ozark Plateau to the sandstone of the Shawnee Hills. Now the Rattlesnake Ferry Fault Line runs just below the base of Bald Knob Mountain, which stands at over a thousand foot. On top of this mountain is Bald Knob Cross, which reaches 111 feet and is one of the most impressive Christian monuments in the Midwest. Thanks for watching, like and subscribe, and we'll see you next time.